Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. A very common question we get asked is, what the heck are these really heavily built structures uh, mounted on the 20 millimeter gun tubs on either side of the ship? It's an especially frequently asked question because there's nothing inside of these anymore. You can't tell what they were once supposed to be. However, this was part of the running lights of the Iowa-class battleships. And this particular structure uh, seems to have been built later on the ship's career. It's not the way the running lights were originally set up on the ship. So running lights are something that are on all major vessels. Uh, th there is a size of small boat down where you're just supposed to have a flashlight to show that you're there. But anything of a certain size and up, don't ask me that size, certainly long before you get to 887 feet long, uh, you're supposed to have fixed running lights wired into the ship. There are several different types of running lights. The most common ones are you always have a green light on your right-hand side, your starboard side, and a red light would go here on your port side. People ask this question all the time. It is a regular white bulb but it's inside a red glass lens. So when it shines through that, it becomes a red light. You'll notice that we do not have the lenses in place anymore. Uh, they were removed from the ship when the ship was mothballed. We may well find them in storage somewhere on board, or they may have been reused on another ship. We don't know yet. Eventually, we'll manage to strip some off another ship and reinstall them. Another light that this ship would have is a stern light. Each of these lights would have an angled piece of metal mounted on each side of it, which will direct that beam in one direction. Realistically, it's not directing the beam, but it's blocking it from other directions so people can't see it. So you'll notice it's blocked off on this side. So if I'm here manning one of the guns, the, the light isn't shining in my face. It's blocked off. And likewise, when we're operating in a formation of ships at night, everybody needs to see where everyone else is. However, you don't want the enemy, a submarine or whatever, to be able to see you. So the, these are very much screened off so you can't see them. The, the regulation for this is you need to be able to see it from dead ahead to two points off the terms abaft. So more or less, if you're looking straight out on this side of the ship that's abaft, two points past that is 22 and a half degrees to the stern, which means that you can see this light from just about anywhere on this side of the ship. And if you're coming dead on, you can see both a green, green and red light at the same time. And that way you know that the ship's coming up behind you. If you're coming up behind a ship, you might just see a white light. Or if you're off to one side, you may well see a white light and a red light or white light and a green light. And it gives you an idea of how you are closing on this ship, what that other ship's bearing is. So you know, is it coming towards you, away from you, or are you going to hit it side on? It's giving you enough information on that. Now, it's one thing if the ship is underway. When you're underway, you've, you've got steerage, you can maneuver, you have a little bit better chance of dodging a collision, which, which is what these are set up to help you avoid. When you're at anchor, you cannot move. So, Battleship New Jersey also has two anchor lights. There's one on the jack staff at the bow and one on the ensign staff at the stern. Whenever the ship is anchored, those staffs will be raised to have flags on them. Most of the rest of the time, they are hinged, so they're folded down when we're at sea. And those lights aren't needed when we're at sea. But when we're anchored, they're folded up, the, lights, uh, the flags are put on them, the lights are turned on. So that will show another ship that we are anchored here and stationary. And it's noticed one's on each end of the ship. So they can tell just how much space there is between this. At night, you, you might not see the ship at all or a silhouette. You might only see the lights on either end. A final type of light that the ship carries is called a masthead light. So this is important for a couple of functions. One, it more or less shows where the center of your ship is. So that gives somebody an idea of uh, 
where the ship is when they're looking at it. And two, it also acts as an aviation warning light. Being high up on the mast, it warns low-flying aircraft from clipping the masts and the rigging of the ship. They know to stay above the highest light. We still use some of these lights today. I've already told you we're missing the port and starboard lights, but our anchor lights are still on. That's how I know if there's power on the ship when I come in in the morning. That's the first thing I check. Is there power? Can I hear the air conditioner running? Because it's loud, you can hear it from really far away. Or can I see smoke coming out of the heating boiler? Um, and those tell me whether I'm gonna have a good day or a bad day while I'm still in the parking lot. Likewise, we still maintain the aviation warning light at the masthead for the same reasons that, that it was designed to be there. We don't want the helicopters that frequently buzz over the ship to get a good view of us to run into the ship and cause damage to us and, and to themselves, but they're not artifacts, who cares? There are many other lights on the ship which would often be turned on. In fact, usually if you come and see the ship at night, we'll have lights up along the railing, we'll have string lights up on the up and overs, we'll have spotlights illuminating large parts of the superstructure. Uh, these are all LED lights, many of which have been installed since the ship was turned into a museum. But the ship did have old incandescent lights for that purpose. For example, lighting up the fantail if we have a helicopter that needs to land on board after dark. Uh, so there are significantly more lights that can be turned on at night, but oftentimes, especially in a war zone, they would not be, and instead, uh, you would just have the bare minimum running lights. And there might even be conditions in which those are turned off to protect the fleet. During World War II, there was even a uh, structure built on the uh, aft mast that, that sort of had a shape like this and a couple of lights in it. There was also a dial sort of thing that was on the helm, and uh, it could only be seen by ships directly behind you. So a group of ships operating in a squadron you can follow the flagship, the one at the head, and uh, you can control the signal that you're sending from those lights. And, and there's ways to signal with those lights that we're turning right, we're turning left, blah, blah, blah. That's removed after World War II, and Battleship New Jersey no longer has it. If you look at our helm uh, console, you'll see that there's one side has this tombstone shaped piece on it that's uh, the engine or telegraph or the rudder angle indicator, something like that. The other side has a tombstone that's just blanked over, and that's where that old piece was removed from. If you go and visit a ship that's still in their World War II configuration, you may see that structure still built on the uh, ensign staff, and you may see that control console up on the steering console. And we haven't even started talking about the ship's signal lamps yet, but that's a story we'll leave for another time. This is a fairly important ship's feature that we haven't talked about before. Can you think of anything else that uh, is important to the battleship that we haven't mentioned before, let us know in the comments down below and maybe it'll be a future video. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support and there's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to help support the museum and our channel. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us and the museum. Thanks for watching.